Hey everybody, Jonathan here. I am in Randers, Denmark at the Memphis Mansion. This is a replica of Elvis's Graceland. So I live in Nashville, so it's kind of funny. I came the whole way across the world to come to something that's not too far away, but I'm a diehard Elvis fan, and of course, you have to stop. So let's go inside and check out the Memphis Mansion. The main museum is inside a replica of the actual Graceland, but before you get to that, you step inside another Elvis replica, and this is a one-to-one -one recreation of Elvis's birthplace in Tupelo, Mississippi. Walking from the parking lot to the birthplace before getting into the actual museum set the tone perfectly for a great visit. From there, you take a short walk up the driveway, which brings you to the front of the house. Now, having been to the actual Graceland many times, it's fun to actually experience something so familiar yet so different. The architecture here is so reverent to the actual Graceland while also using its landscaping and real estate to carve out its own unique feel. Honestly, it's such a perfect balance between being a replica and establishing its own thumbprint that I was in love with this place before I even opened the front door, and once I did that, it got a lot cooler. Now, the inside isn't a one-to-one -one replica of Graceland, but again, it carves out its own unique thumbprint. The basement is the museum, and as you walk down the steps, there are tons of rare Elvis International posters that a U.S. fan would never see otherwise. You could tell that every inch of this museum was crafted with love by its owner, Henrik Knudsen, and while I don't want to spoil the entire experience of what you'll see, here are a few highlights that really wowed me. Seeing all five original Elvis Sun records together was a real treat, and my jaw hit the floor as soon as I walked in the building. There were so many cool memorabilia pieces and even Elvis outfits that really stood out to me. But no Elvis museum would be complete without a few of Elvis's beloved vehicles, and knowing that these somehow made it from the US to this relatively small town in Denmark really put a smile on my face. The number one coolest thing to me was seeing Elvis's actual blue Hawaii shirt on display. This is the one from the Can't Help Falling in Love 45 cover, which was the first Elvis 45 I ever got, so this was such a cool full circle moment for me. The next craziest thing is Elvis's actual Gibson Dove guitar. I actually had chills standing in front of this one because it's just incredible. Like I said, I really don't want to spoil the entire experience, so I'm not going to go into every detail on every last piece of the museum, but I really cannot recommend it enough. It was absolutely magnificent, and it rivals anything we have here in the U.S., dare I say, even Graceland. After the museum, we ate upstairs at the Highway 51 Diner, which is Denmark's take on a 50s American diner, and I've gotta say, I was actually really impressed. The food was great, the peanut butter and banana sandwiches and the hearty burgers really were memorable, and I thought this was a great way to end our time in the museum. Afterward, my buddy Fred and I posed for a photo with the king after lunch before stopping at the Johnny Cash Museum on the way out. This is a free-to-enter museum with a ticket to the Memphis Mansion, of course, and I thought this was such a neat way to honor Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, and one of my other favorites, Mr. Carl Perkins. Every inch of this property is a true great homage to American music, and I'm already looking forward to my next visit to this incredible museum.